industrial size gains for some industrial names recently. Deer and cat up double digits over the past month. But can this run continue? Let's go off the charts with the chart master, Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Carter, what are you looking at? Well, let's look at the sector first, uh, XLI, the spider for the entire sector S&P 500, and then look at the earth. So what do we know? We know where it bounced. It bounced to the penny off of that trend line, or what you would call a level of support, which is the pre-COVID high. The second iteration really tells the story, though. Look at this. Where have we bounced to? We've bounced right to the downtrend line um, that's been in effect since the high on the second chart. And so the question is, does this start to falter here? That's my thinking. It's the definition of a rally to a difficult level. Uh, but deer itself has been even sort of more dynamic and therefore more of a rally to a difficult level. Now, you can talk about a megaphone. It doesn't matter whether you call your pattern a head and shoulder, a cup and handle. It, 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 that's all for selling books. What it is, though, is a rally to a difficult level. That is where overhead supply comes into play. And if we zero in on the here and now chart, and you'll see it next, we've returned quite precisely to the June high. So just finally, look at the percentages. You, you plunge uh, 23, 24% from the June high, not from the all-time high, of course, and then return to it. This is where sellers emerge from above and people who bought well just two, three weeks ago emerge from below, looking to, in principle, book uh, profits. And so I'm a seller here. Write calls against your long at a minimum, but do something. Don't just ride the ride. Usually when you're feeling comfortable that it's all free blue skies, it's something happens. Carter, these are specifically sort of the construction, the equipment names that you're focusing in on. But in terms of industrials more broadly, do you see similar charts for others, a Honeywell, a G, a, you name it? Well, things like Eaton and Emerson have bounced a lot, but then their industrials like G, they're very depressed and uh, mm -hmm. in principle have upside. But I think that XLI chart really tells the tale where, uh, where industrials found their footing and how much they've bounced now. Um, they too, as an aggregate, as a theme, I think are good trim candidates. All right, Carter, good to see you, thank you. Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Tim, you agree? Well, he says, go do something. And, and ultimately, I think the rotation we've seen in markets into industrials and, and, and transports. I mean, look at the IYT, look at the XLI, um, through the 200, and it's the race to get back above the 200, and downtrend lines are broken. So Carter said, you know, what do you do with that? I, I, I look at deer, and I look at the valuation, and it's easy to actually get reasonably excited based upon what you think. If all this other dynamic that we're talking about in terms of the economic headwinds, though, are, are true, and, and also on some level, you've seen uh, a little bit of a front loading of, of of, of you know some of the the construction, but some of the ag products, and and I think that's something that is something to be considered. I, I, so uh, ultimately, I don't really want to own this sector. I actually think markets are going higher overall, and I think therefore you could continue to see some move here. But this value trade, um, I think, will be replaced more by defensive value, and I think that really means high tech. I mean, if ag prices go down, financing costs um, continue to tick higher. That's not necessarily a recipe for success for for either of these stocks. So you're talking about a stagflationary environment. You're talking talking about a global growth that just doesn't really feel like it's all going to come together at the same time. If you think about some of the data that we saw over China in the weekend, it thinks like Europe is going to be a malaise for a very long time. And, and again, you know, I just don't think this is that constructive. I think Tim kind of nailed it. It was a rotation into a value sort of trade where the sentiment was really bad. But I just don't see us coming out in a rip roaring fashion, at least the U.S., um, because I do believe that we're probably not far behind what is likely a recession in Europe, and China has always been one of the locales that drives a lot of interest in a lot of these sorts of names, whether, uh, you know, industrials. In this sector, in the XLI, the largest holding is Union Pacific. So, I mean, when you think about this, it's kind of all mashed up with transports, too. I don't love them here. Yeah, I, I do think, though, if we're looking at some of the names that were mentioned, right, like a deer versus a cat, I actually would look at a deer versus a cat, because although we're looking at your industrials in total, I think your agriculture space, there is still this big supply issue where there's a lot of, whether it's used or new equipment, there's a huge undersupply right now. And a lot of these uh, farmers are actually incentivized to get new, more efficient technology equipment. And that's where I think deer really stands as a longer-term standpoint, whereas construction, which is cat, you're actually seeing a lot less construction spending. So. I think industrials in total is one thing, but if we have to look at them, I'd actually look at a deer over a cat.